muchachos and muchachas, it's good to be back with you. Now, a lot of us are in a statics class, maybe about to start a statics class, uh, have taken one and maybe don't remember as much as they would have liked. Maybe it's been a long time and you need to remember how to solve a statics problem, maybe for your job. Wouldn't it be great if there was some kind of, you know, set of steps or a procedure that would work for most statics problems? That would be great, wouldn't it? There is. It's the recipe. Now the recipe works for most statics problems and it has four steps that are mandatory and one that's optional. All right. So let's go through those four steps. There's only four. Step one. Draw a working diagram. Now what's a working diagram? Well, if you're doing a homework problem, it's the problem the professor handed you. It's got a sketch on it that tells you all the information you need to know. And if you're working on a problem after school, you know, after you've graduated uh, for professional reasons, um, you can take the information you have about the problem, put them all down in a piece of paper in a nice, neat sketch, and uh, you know, identify all the information you've got and identify what you need to know. That's the working diagram. Step two, draw a free body diagram. Now, what's a free body diagram? This is a much reduced version of this. It contains only the body that you're trying to find forces out on. If I can end a sentence with a preposition there. And the important part is that the body has been cut free of its surrounding structure. It's kind of floating in space. That's what makes it a free body diagram. Well, when you cut it loose, the forces change, right? Well, no, because what you do is all those connections that, that uh, connected the part you're interested in with its sur the surrounding world. Uh, when you make those, the, you sever those connections, you replace those connections with forces that are the interface forces between the thing you're trying to solve for and all the stuff around it. That's a free body diagram. Also, the free body diagram has a positive sign convention drawn on it. You got to know what positive X and positive Y are. Okay, so there's no, step two. Step three, write your equations of static equilibrium. Now, that's a 50 cent term for some of the forces equal zero and some of the moments equal zero. That's it. If the sum of your forces is not zero and the sum of your moments is not zero, then the body's moving. You don't have a statics problem. All right? In fact, not only is it moving, it's accelerating. A body in unaccelerated motion can still be solved using statics. But if the sum of the forces is not zero and the sum of the moments is not zero, then you have an accelerating body and now it's a different class. Now it's dynamics. Okay, so step four, solve for something. Solve for something. What are you trying to solve for? I don't know. It depends on what you were trying to figure out when you started this process to begin with. Now, if some propeller head like me uh, gives you a homework problem, that's given in the problem statement. There'll be some force, some stress, some something you're trying to solve for. If you're trying to make your customer or your boss happy, you may need to ask them, or they may be relying on your professional judgment to know what number has to come out of this process in order to, to, uh, to solve another problem. So there's that one. So those are the four mandatory steps, just to go over them again. Working diagram, free body diagram, write your equations of static equilibrium, and then solve for something. What's step five? Five is optional. If you go through all this and you get the right answer, you deserve a cookie. So this is optional, only if it's, it's appropriate for you. Enjoy baked goods. So with that, this is nice as an abstraction. Let's solve an actual problem, shall we? So let me clear my board out and I'll draw a problem out for us. I will draw the working diagram to get us started, okay? So here goes. There's a problem. Let's say we've got a beam and it's supported on two pin connections and that sort of fan looking thing, those little lines down there, just means that whatever's on the other side of that line right there, whatever's down here is rigid and massive. We don't care anymore what it is. It just, it could, imagine it's a giant block of concrete. Whatever it is, it's doing its job. It's holding everything up. We don't care. 
We only care about the parts above this. Now, there's not enough information on this yet. Let's, uh, let's give ourselves some uh, points here. We've got to call them something. A, B, and C sound as good as anything. Um, and we've got to solve for something. What is it we're trying to find? Let's find FB. Let's find the forces at B. Well, let's, let's find both of them. There. Okay. So that's step one. That's a working diagram. You've got the overall geometry. We've got some dimensions. We've got some weights. We've labeled everything. Now we know what to solve. So that's step one. Now, that's not a free body diagram. There's way too much going on there for that to be a free body diagram. So step two, draw the free body diagram. Okay, let's just draw that here. And this gets a lot simpler. Okay, so what we've got here is a middle-aged engineering technology professor who's maybe eaten a few more cookies than he should have, but there it is. And we have replaced the, these pin connections at B and C with the forces in the vertical direction that they would bear. Now, these are pins. They can bear forces in the horizontal direction. There's not any in here because there are no forces in the horizontal direction. Now, if there was something else going on that induced a force in the horizontal direction, this would be a slightly different problem. Okay? Now, one thing, if, if you really want to get technical about the horizontal part of this, I, I'm going to make one change here. I'm going to put this end on rollers. And the reason I'm putting it on rollers is there can, we can only solve for one force in the horizontal direction. And if I fix both of those pin joints, there's actually two forces and you need strength of materials to solve it. So just in case you're wondering, if you're, you've read ahead a little bit and you're wondering how I'm going to do that, that's, this is how I'm going to account for it. Okay, so there really would only be one. There's a force in the x direction at B, but there's no force in the x direction at C because it's on rollers in that direction. So this is what a free body diagram looks like. I've taken this beam, I've cut it free of everything around it, and I've replaced all the forces acting on it with just arrows here, and I've labeled them. All right? So that's step two. That's the free body diagram. Three. All right. Write out the equations of static equilibrium. Well, some of the forces in the x direction. Whoa, that's not a free body diagram because it doesn't have a positive sign convention on it. Let's fix that. Okay, there's x, y in the moment. Now, is this the origin of the coordinate system? No. This is just the positive uh, senses of all your directions. So x is positive to my, let's see, my right, um, my left now. Um, y is positive up, and moment is positive counterclockwise. Now, why did I pick counterclockwise? You guys know about the right-hand rule? If I take x, uh, rotate it into y, my thumb sticks out, my right thumb. Okay. goes out in the z direction, and if I do in the positive, mo uh, positive direction, z comes out that way. That's the positive moment in a right-handed coordinate system. Can I use a left-handed coordinate system? Sure. Mathematics doesn't care. Coordinate systems only exist for bookkeeping. Physics doesn't know or care anything about our coordinate systems. It just works. By convention, we use right-handed coordinate systems almost all the time. If you decide not to, you probably better have a reason. Now, I kind of like them. I'm left-handed. I can write with this hand, and I can do that with this hand. So I can multitask. You righties out there, sorry. One of the few times where being left-handed is an advantage. So anyway, there's some of the forces in the x direction equals 0. Well, that's a boring equation. There isn't anything going on in the x direction. All right, so that was, that was cheap. Some of the forces in the y direction has to equal zero. Well, let's see. Minus w and minus, because it's pointed down, it's going opposite the, y, the positive uh, y convention, positive vertical convention, plus fb plus fc, and that all has to equal zero. Okay? Some of the forces in the horizontal direction equal zero. Some of the forces in the vertical direction equal zero. Remember, if they're not zero, you have an accelerating problem, and this isn't statics anymore, it's something else. Now, it's fine if it's accelerating, it's just not statics. So, last thing I need is the sum of the moments. Well, 
moments have to be calculated around a point. A moment is a force times a perpendicular distance. So they've got to pick something. Well, again, doesn't matter where you pick. The physics doesn't care about your coordinate system. Pick whatever's convenient. I'm going to pick right there. Just, it seems to work pretty well. I've done enough of these problems. My spidey sense tells me this will make it a little easier. I could pick the point out here if I wanted to, and it would work just fine. But let's do this. All right, so, let's see. About that point, W down, see that's counterclockwise, so that's going to be positive according to that sign convention. So let's see, that's going to be 2 meters times W. All right, so I got that one take, uh, taken care of. FB, there's a force. The perpendicular distance from that force to that, the point about which I'm summing the moments is zero. So there's no, there's no term for that. Right? But FC, there is. And the same thing, FC's going up, so around that point it's going to want to rotate counterclockwise, plus 2FC equals zero. All right? Now let's see, one equation, one unknown. I bet I can solve for that. Okay, so let's start solving. And that's step four. So I'll solve that equation first. Uh, the twos cancel out. And FC equals minus W. And that's minus, let's see, 931.6 newtons. And if you insist on doing it in English units of hogshead per cubic furlong or whatever it is, it works out to around nine, uh, 209 pounds. So, uh, that's the, the uh, weight of an average engineering technology professor, I suppose. So that number is, a, is negative. What's that mean? Well, here, I guessed. I didn't know what direction the force went. I just guessed, so I assumed it was positive. That negative sign is just all mathematics and physics basically telling me that, oh, I guessed wrong. The force is actually in the other direction. Well, that makes sense. If you stand somebody on a, on a lever with pivoted in the middle, there better be an equal and opposite, you know, equal force and in the same direction on the other end. Well, that's what this is saying. Equal in magnitude, same direction on the other end. Okay, we're good to go. Let's solve for FB. All right, go up here. FB is minus FC plus W. Well, FC equals minus W, so that's 2W. All right, so that's 2 times 931.6, and I didn't figure this out beforehand, so it's what, 18, looks like it's going to be uh, 62 point, do I believe that? 63.2, boy, I hope I got that right. Um, or, uh, let's see, it's going to be like uh, 418 pounds, if you want to work it out that way. So there we go, we've got working diagram, there's one, free body diagram, equations of static equilibrium, solve for something, and now five, because I'm not going to skip five, enjoy baked goods. I'll do that offline. So I hope this helps. Here's the recipe. It works on pretty much every statics problem you'll ever see. I hope this helps. We'll talk to you next time.